Hello and welcome to another Rogue Entity tutorial series. We are starting a new series today and uh, it's going to be on a multiplayer framework plugin. I've had a lot of requests for people to, from people to do a multiplayer uh, lobby system and multiplayer setup so I've decided to give it a go but I'm going to be doing it with the latest and greatest common series of plugins that uh, Epic have released. So what's this series going to include? Well this first episode is just to cover what it's going to include and just a bit of information on those common plugins that I was talking about. But the overall series, I'm not sure how many episodes at the time of recording this it'll be. It'll be as many as it takes to get it done. I'll probably add to it later anyway. We're essentially going to be implementing a multiplayer lobby plugin that you can drop into your new projects and have multiply up and going straight away. It's going to include the use of data assets so you can use them as game mode and as well as inject other game data and information into, into your games. Uh, you would have seen this in... Lyra, if you have had a play with that, they call them experiences, and I'm just going to show how we do it a bit more simplified than what they do it. Basically, you can have a bunch of different game modes, and it's, they're all just data assets, and you can plug and play as you go and use them to display in your in your like host a game and stuff like that. In this video, this first video, I'm going to cover what common series of plugins, and by that I mean common UI, common game, common user. And there's another one that comes along for the ride that's called Modular Gameplay Actors. If you're not using Common UI, I highly recommend this one. It is the one add-on that is included in, you can add it as a beta version in, in plugins, you know, go to plugins and add. It gives you quite quite a fair amount of stuff that's really cool for UI. So it includes the common input stuff. So it's UI input. It gives you input action display. So if you're making a game, that, you know, might use keyboard and mouse and controller, you can have, you can display what key to press in the, in the inventory, you know, like the A button to select or whatever. And then maybe for keyboard and mouse, you don't want to show anything and it's all configurable that way and, you know, multi-platform setups. Um, but it, the common UI, so the the most common UI stuff is like it has styles, so these are pre-configured. You can do styles for borders, text, buttons, and I think lists is the other one. And it's just like pre-defined. If, you, if you've done my um, general UI tutorial material, I use styles in that. And, and, you know, like I created a bunch of ones for the font. And you can have, you know, like when you open Word, you've got font for header one, header two, header three, and then you might have one for normal text and italic text. You can sort of set those things up with common UI as well and just implement those throughout your project and the UI everywhere. And it's it's consistent across the board and you know if H4 header font isn't quite right, then you can change it throughout your whole project by changing one file. And that's the same for, you know, border styles, button styles and everything like that. It's that's really cool. It's real powerful. The other thing, that, and the, the main thing that we want out of this is the widgets that it adds. So it adds, it, it, they're all just sort of extensions, except for the common activator widget, but the common UI adds a, a bunch of extensions to already existing widgets that come with the engine. So like user widget, there's a common user widget, you know, button widget, there's a common base button, uh, common button base widget, and it just adds some generally... Generally, it adds additional events and, you know, the styling options and, and all that stuff to see, so you can interface with it. And then the other main one is the common activatable widget and the common activatable widget stack, which is what we'll be using. The activatable widget makes it really easy to add or remove widgets. And that's why we want to use common game as well. Common game adds sort of common framework classes and like, you know, player control, or local player, uh, there's a common game instance that you'll need to use all this stuff. The main purpose of common game is it, it adds uh, an interface to modular actor setup, and that's why it has a dependency on the uh, modular gameplay actors. But we don't really get into the modular gameplay actor sort of part of this for, for this purpose, but it's linked to the game feature plugin that um, they use in Lyra. So you, you can use the game feature plugin to load and unload content similar to how like a plugin does but you can do it at runtime so you can have like it, the most common easiest way to think of it is you know when games have like a christmas or a halloween theme you can just all of a sudden load a game feature that just adds that stuff in your world and, and then when halloween or christmas is over you just turn it off and it unloads all that stuff and it's gone you can even have players go you know what i don't want to see christmas trees so i just want to turn it off and they it means they don't even load that content the common game sort of adds all the events and delegates and stuff for loading initializing and controlling the modular component activation at runtime the common game also has some ui aspects which i have no idea why they're in 
in common game, but they, you think they'd be in common UI. But it adds uh, the async widget creation and the pushing and, and uh, popping from uh, the layout. So it, all, it also adds the primary game layout, which is what we what I'd like to use. I, I really like it. Primary game layout, you register a bunch of widget stacks. So you might have a widget stack for your, you know, your menu in your game, and you might have a widget stack for your game UI. And then what you can do is you just you just push widgets to that layout and it automatically handles the uh the, the loading and unloading because it's a stack so if you if you know how a stack works you you push on top you push to the stack and then you pop off the top so if you load say three widgets it's going to remember what's underneath it so when you close the top widget it'll go back to the previous widget and so forth so and, and it sort of adds transitions and all that for you it's so much better than trying to manually add to viewport remove from viewport and all this other stuff you know, like when you're going through multiple menus and pop-ups and modals and whatever else. And then the final one was common user. The, the main thing we're going to be using from common user is the common session subsystem. And that just adds functionality, sort of like, uh, it's almost a replacement for the online subsystem. You still need online subsystem. It's still talking to online subsystem. But the, it adds all, a whole bunch of events and, and handles all that stuff a little bit differently to how it's handled by default and we'll um, use the common session subsystem quite a bit once we get into the UI multiplayer and you know the lobby and joining sessions and all that sort of stuff. So that's definitely not an in-depth look at this common series of plugins as I call them but the I have to first say that the, just a word of caution the common series of plugins are either experimental or beta like the common UI is and they're highly subject to probably significant changes from Epic. So if you're intending to release a game in anytime soon I recommend not using this exact setup. That said you can use this structure like as in you can use this plugin setup with the regular online subsystem and the online subsystem Steam setups to create a quickly configurable multiplayer framework for new projects. And by that I mean you can drag a folder in, you've got that lobby system in your project ready to go pretty much and you can just start making a game instead of redoing the multiplayer lobby again and again. Obviously the first thing you want to do with a game if you're even thinking about making multiplayer is have the ability to test proper multiplayer. Do not make a multiplayer game without testing properly with multiplayer. And I'm talking to clients, not just to open windows in your editor. I'm going to leave this episode here as uh, this is just sort of the for info episode. If you're thinking about doing this tutorial series, I will uh, see you in the next episode.